Hey guys, Daniel James here. And today we are on the final part of our uh, Spitfire BBC Symphonic Orchestra first look. It's been a fucking long one. So I fucked this up a little bit. Uh, if you want to hear the untuned percussion from uh, BBC, go to the Woodwinds video. It's the first five minutes. I was going to do the percussion. I ended up doing Woodwinds for some reason. So this video will be the rest of the percussion. So it will probably be considerably shorter than the rest of them. But uh, if, you're, if you're looking for that untuned percussion, we started it in the Woodwinds one. But anyway, so let's dive into our uh, final section, which is going to be percussion, which we didn't cover yet. So we're on the timpani. I'm excited for this timpani. God, the light is so bright now. Oh, we've got to wait for everything. There we go. Oh, no, we don't need to wait. It's already there. Oh, no, it's not. These actually sound good. Taking a while to load, but it sounds good. Come on. Every video is literally starting with me going, come on. Please. Please. Oh. So I'm, um, I mean, like, I feel like it, it sort of makes sense for the videos. So when people are watching, when you guys are watching this on YouTube, you can see how every single one we've had to wait. And this, is, this isn't the kind of shit they show you in the official videos. That sounds, okay. that sounds like Roto Toms. Yeah, I definitely don't recommend this as a starting library. Okay, maybe if I stop playing it a little quicker. It does. So if you try and, uh, is that true? If you try and play it, it loads quicker? No, because that stopped. Go down to zero. Oh, it's, that, that was just a coincidence. It sounds good though. It's not too overly muddy. I'm not fucking with these yet. Great timpani. Man, timpani's great. Timpani gets a thumbs up. Rolls? Does that feel like the top end of a timpani? I think it kind of does. That feels good. The rolls sound really good. This is mix two, yeah. Hits super damped. So is that the hits are super or the damp is super? It's super damped or the hits are super. 
Which one is it? It feels like super hits. So it doesn't feel like it's more damped, it feels less. Like that's bad grammar. What does it mean? Are the hits super damped or are the hits super and damped? Because it feels like it's hit super and they're damped. Dampened. Right, timpani gets a big thumbs up from me. Oh, harp. Ugh. Is it, which is it? Which is it? Is it, su is it more damped? Then why are the things louder? Why was the, why were the hits actually super? Why were there super hits? So many questions. So many questions that are never gonna be answered. Anyway, that's what that sounds like to me. Okay. I need to play this right. I need the key. I need the key. Helps if you play the note the same. No sustain pedal. With sustain pedal. It's the same. Kiss me like you miss me. You know that's going to be on YouTube forever, Mike. I love you guys too. Just stop trying to seduce me while I'm playing harp. You wouldn't play that, though, would you?
I love this. It's great. Oh, Jesus. Please surpass the eight hour mark for this stream. Keep going. That's, that's quite a tall order. Yeah. Oh, that last note scuffed it. Damp, damped, dampened. This one's like, it's like very, very damped, damped medium. Bisbeegliz, <laughs> what? Looks like someone just spammed the keyboard. So, Bisbeeglisando trend. Interesting. What happens if we just... It's a cool vibe. I bet that sound cool in a reverb. Well, the thing is, the thing is, is whenever, whenever you get to something like that, I feel like as a rule of thumb, if you are going to charge a thousand dollars for something, I feel like at best, at no, at minimum, at minimum, you should have more articulations than the contact factory library. Well, that's a brass instrument. Six. You know what I mean? I feel like if you're gonna ask me to spend a thousand dollars, there should be more than you have in the contact factory library. Right, so the harp, I fucking love. Oh, we didn't listen to Gliss. Sounds good, actually. How was I supposed, what does direction mean? I mean, obviously it means go down, but how was I supposed to know that that was an option in this fucking hidden menu? <laughs> Ugh, anyway. Soured the taste in my mouth, marimba. Oh my God, how long to load two patches? Literally two articulations. How long is it going to take? Like, why, why is this taking so long? Still loading in. But at least I can play it now.
Fuck, I need I need some I need some tail. Jesus, not that much. I love the sound of this. Okay, percussion's moved up. Actually, no, it's still third. Ah, oh, Celeste. I wonder what mix two sounds like. No, fuck it. We're going, we're going just spill mics. Just spill mics. And then we'll put the mix mic at the end. No way. That's it. I just need to. some reason it sounds quite okay let's turn the mix back on and turn off all the oh, let's get rid of this little moment i love it but for some reason it's really awkward to play because look it plays really soft oh now it's playing okay Maybe it needed to load
I like doing that. Now, this is cool. Sorry, silent moment because I was just playing with it because that celeste is one of my favorite things in this library. But like you can play these really, really fast. Well, like. Uh, you can play that really fast. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that was the celeste, absolutely brilliant. That gets a big thumbs up from me. Xylophone. <laughs> you guys know what that is, right? Do I still use? Oh yeah, I still use True Strike from now. Every now and again. Mostly for tubular bells and snare at the minute, but not so much anymore. Okay. A lot of, lot of Glockenspiel users. There isn't... There's no mix two. There's no mix two on the Glockenspiel. Jake Jackson, the lazy bastard, couldn't do a mix for every 
<laughs> How dare he miss the glockenspiel? How dare he? Oh, look, it's missing all sorts of mics. They got them spill mics, but they were like, nope, not having any. Oh, wait, never mind. They loaded in. They loaded in. Maybe they were loading in still. I don't know, but they, they appeared. I don't know. Help. Yeah. Mix 2 loaded in, so maybe there is a mix 2. I lied. I'm not actually a piano player by by trade. Yeah, I tried Harry Potter but fucked it up. Oh but Can someone get that for fuck's sake? Sounds like a phone. Sorry. Just trying to wind up my wife. Okay, Glockenspiel is very Glockenspielish. Tubular bells. Right? Now on to the next one. <laughs> Isn't that what Paul did? Just went. Right, okay, there's the tubular bells. I am not mad at that Glock. That is a good way of putting it. Yeah, these are my new tubular bells. Although they got a shitload of bass in them. What was that about? That hasn't been mixed. This. What is this? What is all that nonsense? I think you could probably get by without any of that. Let's see. Would that been so hard for someone to check that out? You know what I mean? Like it's things like that. That's what I mean. These little, these little just oversights of like, if this was a cheaper library, we'd let, we'd, we'd, we'd probably let that go, you know, whatever. But like, again, a thousand dollars, it's like buying an iPhone and then the mail app just not working or not working properly. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the price of this that bothers me when it comes to things like, like low mud like that. You can even see it. It's not like it's, it's not like that is a, let's move this out of the way. It's not like that is a, a hard thing to spot. Sounds better with it to you? Okay, let me make it more narrow. Without it. it, no, that low mid is not on purpose. That this this sound is not. This isn't part of the tubular bell. Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. That's more what they would sound like. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's how difficult would it have been to just process the samples with that? Because this is dynamic. So if I play soft, it's not just doing a big 
Like, uh, how big is that? It's not doing a 10 dB cut on everything. It's only doing a 10 dB cut on the things that go over that level. Again, without... Just all this... at the bottom. That's a shame. It's a shame. And you see, this is, this is again... People keep saying, why do I mention the, the player? This is one of the things that bugs me about the player because if I came and like, let's say that, I don't know, that this harp had a mid, I could just come here and add an EQ and then just scoop that shit and save the patch, right? I could save the patch and then there would be no more, no more ness ever again because I would have scooped it out, right? As I've done, look, I actually have an EQ'd version of the uh, Spitfire's uh, trombones, their longs, uh, horns and longs and trombones and whatnot. I just added a, an EQ, a couple of EQ cuts because it was a bit too aggressive. And you see like this, if, if this was contact, that low would be gone immediately because it's not there for any reason. It just makes it sound amateurish. It's just, do you want, like, and the thing is, is sure, in isolation, that may sound fine, the but when you've got a, a synth bass, a, a, a double bass, a cello, uh, drum percussion, all vying for, like, control of that low mid, when you have a fucking tubular bell waltz in going, hey, guys, can I join in? It's like, fuck no, you cannot get the fuck out with all that mud. Like, that's, you see what I was, that, that, that's what you do. And now because I can't, like there's no EQ on this. I can't, there's nothing I can do about that. I am stuck with that shitty sample. Like there's no EQ here. So if ever I want to get rid of that, every time I load up this tubular bell, I have to put on a, an EQ to get rid of that low mid. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing I can do with the player. I can't save this patch in a better condition. I'm stuck with that shit sound until they fix it. And that's what I hate. I hate that so much. You've ruined tubular bells for me, Spitfire. God damn it. I should save it as a track preset. Like a lot of these like workarounds, they're, they're things that I, I don't have to do with anything else. I like Vibrofend. They got a vibe when they work, when they play. When they eventually fucking play. When they're not. Like, there we go. Oh no. Why did that happen? No extended articulations on vibraphone. They don't love you guys. So that's all you get for the vibraphone. And then last is Crota. Why do we always end up with the, the crappy ones at the end? <laughs> Why is this the last thing we hear? Sounds all right. Oh, this, this is what I'm interested in. I want to hear the bowed ones. Let me put it in black hole as well. 
See how it sounds tuned down? Okay. Maybe too far. Let's go 12. Of course they haven't done it in... How do I get this to go in? Good job, Spitfire. Good job. Make it awkward. Sounds better pitched down. This is really awkward to get it on a solid number. That sounds fine. Wee. With black hole on, this will sound amazing. All right, this is what they sound like normally. Kind of harsh, right? But that in a reverb. It's a very Hollywood sound, that. And on that note, that is, I think, officially the fucking entirety uh, of the BBC Symphonic Orchestra. So, welcome to the end. If you've made it this far, fucking well done. I think there's only me and a few others that have made it this far. Um, so, what do we think? So, firstly, chat room, what do you think of the percussion? This is technically the percussion video. And this will also be percussion and final thoughts, I think. Um, so what do we think? So the first thing that comes to mind is the strings sounded great. Uh, some of them did like the, the violas were okay. The cello was okay. Bass was good. First strings were good. Second strings were good in certain situations. They, they were, they sounded really great. They take forever to load, which sucks, but, uh, the brass, uh, is the weakest section by far. Some of the brass just sound bad. Uh, some of it sounds like it's a mistake. Like the, I, I'm pretty sure the staccatos in all of the brass feel like they're just missing that upper range, like they've accidentally forgot to put it in. However, I do fear that that was intended. It is as intended, so maybe we won't get anything uh, different. But yeah, the brass just does not work for me, except for the trombones, which sound pretty good. Uh, the tuba's okay. The, the lower ones are okay. Uh, the woodwinds sound great. Uh, they... Like the flute's good, the oboe's good, English horn left a lot to be desired. The lower instruments didn't have much bass in them, but they sounded okay. But that was probably my my second favorite. Uh, and lastly, the percussion sounds amazing, except for a couple of like the lower drums, like, you know, like the, the bass drum didn't sound incredible. You know, like those lower kind of, the untuned percussion, not that great, except for the snare, which sounds really good. Timpani's good, but that's not untuned percussion. We'll get there in a minute. So the snare was good. Uh, the cymbals were good and the tam-tam was good. In the tuned percussion, tubular bells was good, but it's got that low mud. But unfortunately, we have no way of fixing that. So we're stuck with it, but whatever. Uh, the the celeste was great or celeste, however it's pronounced. I call it celeste because whatever, I can do what I want. I'm a grown man. The celeste sounded great. Um, all the other high pingy stuff sounded good, but the celeste particularly was on point. The harp sounded really good. I'm glad they included the harp. So how do I feel like as a, as a package? So this, if you are just getting started, if you are looking for a beginner library, um, don't start here. I don't think it's it's a thousand dollars, but they've cut the corners the same way that you would on uh, like a normal lower end entry library. You know, like uh, not I'm I'm not saying they cut corners. I'm just saying instead of recording lots of uh, you know dynamic layers and. You know, a lot of it feels like there's some shortcuts taken here and there. So I would price this more like this would be worth more like three, four hundred, like an Albion. This is like Albion priced quality. So if you guys have used Albion before, like it's good quality, but it's not. I don't know. It's not a good place 
really, I mean, yes and no, it's a good place to start. It's a good place to start because you've got everything, but it's a bad place to start because it's really expensive for what you get. The brass is useless and it takes a long time to load and things. Okay, so moving on. So load times are fucking atrocious. Granted, I'm working on a, a, a regular hard drive, a, uh, a 7200, you know, Revolution 1, Revolutions 1, not an SSD. However, I run, uh, as I showed multiple times, I'm running many different sample libraries off the exact same hard drive that I was able to load and play instantly, you know, because of the way contact does it. So I'm not accepting that as an excuse for why the load times were so poor because the competition can do it and make it playable and fine and run fine and use memory. So it's, you know what I mean? You can't use it as an excuse if other people are doing it. That's just an excuse at, at that point. It's literally just an excuse. So the load times are atrocious. They will be better on SSD, but that doesn't mean that they fix the load problem. They, they need to fix the load problem at the source code of the engine. Uh, again, if this was a contact library, I, I bet you it would load just the way we'd want it to. Uh, the, the Spitfire engine itself, I still dislike it from the Hans Zimmer strings. A lot of wasted UI, a lot of uh, space in the UI design that's just wasted blank void space. That they're not using for anything. Too many features are hidden and there's no indication that you can use them. Like, uh, like the double tonguing. The double tonguing, you can change how many double tongues there are or how many tongings there are, but you can also change how much sustain there is afterwards. None of this is explained or reflected on the UI. You have to just know this or read the manual. And I, I, the reason I point out is I know most of you are not going to read the manual, so that's an irrelevant point. You just have to know this stuff or you never use it. Uh, yeah, loads poorly. It's uh, I don't like the way uh, that you can't add effects like you saw with the tubular bells. I wasn't able to e cut the EQ in the base, that just a muddy base that's there for no reason. Uh, if it was in contact, I'd cut that and save the patch again so that I have my clean version. You know, if they're not going to fix it, at least I can fix it and save it for later use. But because I can't do that, I'll probably never use it because I don't know if I can be asked every time I use that sound to find BBC Orchestra, load it, wait for it to load in all the samples, then pull in my EQ so that I can get rid of that bass thing and then play that one fucking note I was going to play on the tubular bells. You know what I mean? It's too much work. Like you want to make it so I just open it and push the key. That's all I want to do. Um, too many microphones. I wish they'd have uh, done more round robins, more dynamic layers, more different articulations, more than more microphones. I guarantee you I will use maybe 1% of those microphones, um, maybe less. You know what I mean? I'm not going to use all that. I'm, I'm going to use mix one or mix two for 99.9% .9 of the things I do. The only time I'll ever change is if it's on uh, a snare. You know what I mean? It, like on that snare, when it's, when it's the big drum room, right? That's the only time I think I would ever particularly go to the extended microphones because it changes the sound of the actual snare so much. Other than that, I'm probably going to use one or two microphones. I could have just been left with four and a 200 gig download, and I've been perfectly happy with that. I'd have been much happier with that. The 600 gigabytes was pointless because most of that content I'm never going to use. It's just microphone content, you know, because every time they load a microphone, they have to load in every sound for every instrument that you've got loaded again. So it doubles up your RAM. It's just not worth it. It uses up too much memory for how much you get out of it. It works great on percussion. So if you've got something like Hans Zimmer percussion, the mic positions actually work really well on stuff like that because you can change perspectives of the percussion. And I feel like whatever the percussion does kind of defines how the room feels. That might just be me, but I, in general, that's how I feel about it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not for beginners. It's too expensive for beginners for what you get. I'd recommend something like uh, like, like, like a nucleus, like we looked at the other week or something similar like that. You know, I always recommend contact for factory library as its first, uh, as its first, as your first library, just by contact six, I guess it is now with the factory library, you get full orchestral coverage there and then buy libraries to supplement the bits you don't like from that. You see, because then you'll have full contact and you can buy any contact library. If you start with Spitfire's one, you're stuck with Spitfire engine and you can only load BBC Orchestra in it. Like you're not getting any extras for your cash as a starter library. So this is not a starter library. This, who is this for? This is for people who want to do a more classical approaching sound, like a more BBC TV type sound that's more 
kind of situated in a classical type sound. It's a more uh, period-esque sound, this recording. I'm not saying B I've heard BBC sound modern before, but this particular BBC orchestra sounds very, uh, you know, old school, very period, uh, very period drama in its kind of aesthetic. Um, so if that's your kind of music, it's probably like if you're a professional, I'd pick it up for that kind of thing. Um, having gone through every sound in the library, I would not have purchased this with my own money at all. Um, it just, it, it doesn't do anything new. It sounds good for what it is, but I have so many things that sound just as good, but, uh, better in other ways. Like, uh, you know, cinematic studio strings, for example, has really great tights, <laughs> really great tights, really great short notes. It has great harmonics. It has great longs. It's got a great ensemble patch. There's no ensemble patch on this, so I can sketch things quick. Loads instantly. Uh, you know, if I'm using high strings, I need to go loud. I've got Metropolis Arc. If I need to go quiet, I've got uh, I've got Albion 2. I've got Albion 5. Like, th this is going to struggle for me to find any use except for those one or two little things because it doesn't do anything better than anything else I already have. So if you're a professional, you have to look for the the, the gaps where it's going to work for you. Um, but yeah, like uh, that's what that's what I'm saying because they marketed did this. Like this this is why Spitfire always seems to get a harder deal because Spitfire is the only company out there that overhypes so badly. Like they they overhype. They just keep pushing this hype thing, and I'm sure it's great for them. You know all this hype, but then when the library comes out and we're all disappointed for the fifth time. You know what I mean? There comes a point when you're like, okay, I need to stop believing the hype, which is what I did on this one. And I'm glad I did because if I'd have bought this with my own money, I'd have been severely disappointed personally. It's too much money for what it is. Uh, but yeah, I've covered that. Uh, so again, back back on who it's for. So it's for that kind of mid-range of professional composers who want that particular kind of classic classical type sound in one package. You know what I mean? If you want that in one package, this is perfect. If you do big epic stuff, this isn't for you. If you do trailer music, it's not for you. If you do big hybrid things, it could be for you, but you may find better options elsewhere. Like I say, what's best to do is find a cheaper all-around all library, like a Nucleus. I keep using that one because it's the first one that came to mind. But you like if, if, uh, your money would be better spent by buying something like Nucleus and seeing which sections don't work for you and then augmenting Nucleus with other like libraries that are specific, you know, so like a string library or a brass library that you can get for like another 300. You could buy three libraries, like how, how you could get like a 300 all rounder library, a 300 string library, dedicated string library, a 300 dedicated brass library, and you've still spent less than this is, and you would have a considerably better arsenal. So this library, um, Say it's the same shit, different orchestra. It's the Spitfire mantra, it seems to be at the minute. Just it's the same kind of thing. It's another Spitfire library with another orchestra, another room. Sounds like Spitfire. If you like that, you're gonna love this. It's got that Spitfire kind of MF-ness to it. Um, if you do big epic stuff, probably not. But it's yeah, so for me, not personally for me, but it may be for you. I'm not if you enjoy this library, if you like it, if you liked all the sounds, that is great for you. Um, like then absolutely go buy it. But for me personally, it did nothing new for me. Um, but anyway, I hate to end on a downer, but like I've I've been watching this library for a while and I've it's one of those things. It's like now I'm done. It's like everything that I was concerned about initially came to pass. And it's like it's like that scene from Arrested Development where it says dead dove don't eat. And he opens it and he's like, I don't know what I expected. You know, it's it's exactly what I expected it to be. Um but yeah, so I, I would always recommend, I would always recommend with things like this is look like in videos like this, if you see reviews of this, if you disagree with me and you watch reviews of this, just watch for the points where the edits are. Go back to the Spitfire videos, watch the edits. Notice they'll never make you sit and watch a load time. They'll never sit and make you watch a dynamic layer change. Like that's where these things are useful. I know they're long. I know they're long winded. And, you know, I know you all wish I would stop talking at some point. But these these live things are useful because there's like if I say if I say something's bad, it's bad while it's happening, and you can agree or disagree there. And then at the end, when I have all my thoughts, you can all keep going back to those exact points in the video where I'm showing where that opinion came from. So yeah, a, an okay library let down by subpar software, um, aimed at beginners, but out 
completely outpricing beginners, but seemingly aimed at them. Um, if you're a professional, you probably already have stuff already like it. It's another thing. If you want it for inspiration, go for it. Um, but yeah, my final thought is it sounds okay, but it's too expensive for what it is. Is that a fair statement? What do you think in the chat? First, so you, I want to, yeah, chat, just say fair or not fair. You know, you don't have to put anything more than that. Do you think that my, my summary is fair or not fair based on what you've seen today? Um, and that, that, you know, that's all I want to know. Like, I, I'm not trying to be a dick. This is literally just how I feel about it. And then uh, out of interest, are you in or are you out? In meaning you would buy it at $1,000, out meaning you would not. Because I'm, I'm doing this at recommended retail price. I can't do it at sale price. They, the reason you have sale prices is so that when people talk about the library, they talk about it at the sale price. It's not. It's $1,000 and it sells for $750 on sale, but it's a $1,000 library. Um, yeah. And like, that's the thing. I don't know who this is for. Who do you guys think it's for? It can't be for new people. It's too expensive for new people. It doesn't have enough percussion for new people. It doesn't cover everything for new people. It would work for professionals if they wanted like a sketch library because it has all the instruments, but it's too big. It's too big to be a sketch library. They've cut corners like it's a sketch library, low dynamic layers, uh, you know, some out of tune issues, poor, poor power. You know, it feels like a sketch library that you have to pay bespoke price for. I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out in my head, like how I feel about it. It's a niche for composers looking for a very specific sound. I agree. I agree. So I would, I would take, I would, I would, what, what's the, what's the phrase? I would heed caution. I would, I would ask you to take caution whenever you watch a, a Spitfire thing that promises the second coming, because this is probably the third time, fourth time now where the second coming has ended up being not at all. It's just been another, like this, if I was ranking this by number, this would be like a six or a five. This would be a five or a six out of 10. I don't know, but I'm not going to start, I'm not going to start number scoring things. I think that's unfair. But it's uh, it's an average, it's a middling library. But it is just the beginning. We're gonna get maybe it'll all change around when we get that free bass flute. I don't know if you guys know this. There's a free bass flute coming apparently, or at least there better be because Vi Control fucking hammered me, telling me that it was gonna be free. So we got a free bass flute coming eventually, and apparently lots of free content coming. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, not not particularly impressed with this one. But you know, not amazingly disappointed. I didn't have to pay for it, so. I don't know. But what do you guys think? What do you get? If you're on YouTube, what do you think? Leave it down in the comments. I hope you've been commenting on all of them and watching it, or at least skimming through them. Uh, if you're not subscribed on YouTube, make sure you do already if you, uh, if you enjoyed the content. This is probably the most long form video you're going to get because this is almost seven hours long. But it's going to be broke into what, like three two hour videos maybe? Um, so they don't always usually run this long. But if you look down below on, uh, if you're on Twitch, look down below for a link to YouTube. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the link to YouTube's down below. And if you're on YouTube, the link to Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash hybrid two. That's where we stream that. The link will be in the description below. Uh, but make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you are enjoying the content. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter at H2Daniel. That's when I uh, post whenever I'm going live or I'm posting a video or something. You're always going to find out on Twitter first because I have it on my phone. So it's easy to do. Uh, other than that, if you're on YouTube, this is where the, this is where the video is going to end. I hope you've enjoyed this mammoth four vid four videos. Is it three videos or four videos? Four video um, marathon or compilation omnibus. What do you call it when there's four? It's not a, it's not the um, not the try. What's the the what do you call it like when there's four films? It's not a trilogy anthology. Is that four? Tetralogy a quartet. A quartet's like when you're oh I like to sing it. About the moon and the tune. It's the cinema. Welcome to the Spitfire Cinematic Universe hosted by Daniel James. So whatever it is. So these four videos, uh, you know, it's been a long thing. But anyway, thank you for sticking through. If you're on the stream, uh, hang around. But if you're on YouTube, this is where we're going to end. So I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>